So when you first install Stellarium, it comes with quite a few telescope, camera, and eyepiece options. However, it is impossible to account for all of the variations of equipment that is out there. Would you like to know how to add your own gear? We'll go over just that in this video, starting now. Hi there, my name's Dalen. Here at Astroscape, we go over all things astrophotography, starting from the very beginner level and working our way up from there. If you're new here, as you're watching, if you like what you see, please consider subscribing. Let's get into it. So as I mentioned, Stellarium comes with quite a few options already built in. Fortunately, it's very easy to add your own gear. But before adding your own gear, go to the manufacturer's website for each piece of gear you wanna add in and get certain specifications. Now, quick tip about that before you go into it. For telescopes and eyepieces, there are only a few manufacturers worldwide that actually produce the hardware. It often gets rebranded under different brands. So for example, this Zoomal 30 millimeter eyepiece is actually made by GSO. And if you compare them to the GSO website, it looks exactly the same, just with the different branding on the eyepiece itself. Now, if you look at the website too, it gives us the correct uh, specifications that we're looking for. So, what specifications do we need to get into? So, if we're doing visual astronomy, the first thing we're going to want to look at is our eyepieces, and the two specifications that we'll need there is the apparent field of view and the focal length. Now, for both visual and astrophotography, we can toss in our telescopes, and for the telescopes, we need the diameter and the focal length. If you're using a camera lens for astrophotography, so say a 135 millimeter lens, this is where you'll add it. The last thing we'll need is the sensor or the camera that you'll be using for astrophotography. And what you'll need here is the resolution in pixels and the chip size in millimeters. Moving into Stellarium, up in the upper right, if we click on the Oculus button, this will bring up the general overview of everything that you will be seeing, whether you use the visual preview or the um, sensor preview button of the DSO that you're trying to look at. So moving into eyepieces, if we click on the eyepiece tab, all we have to do is click add and then name it. So my So say we name it my eyepiece, all we do is we put in the apparent field of view. So let's say it's 48 and this is a 25 millimeter eyepiece. And that's all there is to it. You just hit enter. Very simple to add. Hitting enter saves it so there's no save button. And that's basically it. It's very simple to do. So if we want to move on to telescopes, we don't go to the lenses tab. The lens tab is actually for Barlow's and we're just going to ignore those for now. So let's go over to the telescopes tab. So let's say we wanted to add the Dobsonian that I have. So if I click add, scroll down and then just say eight inch Zomol Dob. Okay. So I know the focal length of that thing is 1200 millimeters and the diameter is 203 and that's it now one thing you're going to want to watch out for if you're using a newtonian reflector or a daub you do want to make sure that you have the uh, correct flip buttons checked based on what you're using so if you're using a schmidt or anything like that just make sure you have the correct flip added in but if you're using just a refractor then you don't need to worry about the flip but anything with mirrors in it you do need to worry about it. the other thing you're going to want to take into account is what mount you're going to be putting it on so if you do have it on an equatorial mount check that box otherwise it'll just be all ads and really that's all that is now my uh eight inch daub is in there so whatever you added will be in there as well so if we're doing astrophotography we do want to add our camera so let's go to the sensors tab. Now the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to is if you're using a DSLR, a lot of DSLRs have pretty much the same chip size. So my Canon uh, T7i, which is what I'm shooting this on, actually has the pretty similar specs to the Canon 80D here. So I don't really need to add it. So if you already looked at the manufacturer's website and then you come in here and see that the sizes are pretty much the same, then really all you have to do is rename the camera. However, say you got a Zewo camera and wanted to add that in. 
So you click add just as before, and I will click on the Zero since I already have it here. You add in the resolution in pixels and the chip width in millimeters. Now, if you're using an older version of Stellarium, it will ask you for the pixel size in microns. We don't need to do that anymore. If you update your Stellarium uh, to the newest version, it actually does that math for you. So you don't need to find it anymore. And I know that some chips are hard to find. So if you just update your Stellarium to the newest version, you don't have to do that anymore. All right, and that's all there is to it. We can go ahead and just close out that window and let's take a little bit of preview uh, with that daub and that 30 millimeter eyepiece that I put in here. So the first thing we have to do is actually click on an object. So let's click on that star right by the Orion Nebula and then click on the visual. So here it already has like a Celestron Luminous 10 millimeter. Let's go ahead and uh, first change the telescope to my eight inch daub. So there is my eight inch daub and then let's change it to that, I'm sorry, 25 millimeter eyepiece that I put in here. I thought it was 30, but nope, it is 25. Oh, there we go, my eyepiece. And this is what the Orion Nebula would look like through that eyepiece. Now moving on to the sensor stuff. If we are imaging something, we'll get a screen that looks very similar to this. And let me back it out to my ZS61. So as soon as we stop having cloudy nights here and I can get a chance to get out there to image um, the Orion Nebula, this is very much what the framing will look like. However, say I don't like that it's laid out like that and I want to spin it just a little bit. If you look at this rotation bar here, you can go ahead and change your field of view. Um, most mounts allow you to rotate the camera on it so you don't have to base it on what Stellarium does for you. But this gives you an idea of what things look like when they're framed up. Um, so let's say that I wanted to image Andromeda. This is what it would look like. And again, uh, Let's say I don't like the way that this is set up, so we can just rotate around. So I do have a quick question for you, and I want to know down in the comments, what piece of gear are you adding to Stellarium? And did it look kind of how you thought it would? If you found this video helpful, please do like, do that little comment for me, and then subscribe, and then maybe hit that little notification bell so that way YouTube does tell you when I upload the next video. I wanna thank you for watching. Clear skies.